With how progressive Unitarian Universalists are known to be today, it might be hard to believe that we are the religious descendants of the Puritans. I'm mostly going to leave talking about that to Bill Norsworthy, who's going to talk about that next Sunday for our Open Issues, which is our adult learning opportunity that starts at 9.30 before the worship. But those connections tie into what I'm talking about today as well. Because for many years, they were symbolized in the Unitarian Universalist Association headquarters. All of those buildings were in the historical Beacon Hill neighborhood of Boston. The main building was right next door to the Massachusetts State House and across the street from the famous Boston Common. These were originally the American Unitarian Association's buildings and included additional office space, Beacon Press, and even a bed and breakfast. Remember, the Unitarians and Universalists didn't merge until 1961. So we're talking purely about the American Unitarian Association for the moment. They built the headquarters almost 100 years ago, between 1925 and 1927. And it reflected their place in Boston society. However, the time came, like for many of us, when it's time to consider a move. Now, making a move can be hard. Under the, be the best scenario is that you really like where you're at, but you also really like where you're going. Oftentimes, there's a sense of loss and grief, even in those best circumstances. Even if we like where we are and we like where we're going, there's still a sense of loss there, oftentimes. There oftentimes are really important memories that are connected with the old place. Even a sense of identity connected with the old place. You know, I was part of this neighborhood. I belong. These, these are my, my neighbors and my community. And who's going to make the snickerdoodles when we trade cookies at the holidays now? Or who's going to help this one neighbor to... Um, you know, when they need somebody to, to provide childcare last minute. You know, we have a place in our community. And when we make a move, sometimes that shift in identity can require some remodeling of ourselves to fit with the new arrangement. Some moves and some changes in life are also clear demarcations that things have changed and will never be the same again. Even if it's a choice, it might not feel exactly like a choice. Now, if you don't know where you're going, if you just know that you have to leave this place where you've been, but you don't know where you're going yet, ugh, oh, that makes the transition pretty uncomfortable, huh? If you know you miss, if you know you'll miss your garden and you know where you're going, you can start to look at where are the community garden locations that you could maybe have a, a plot. Or you could find out where the tennis courts are or the library or whatever it is that's important to you. But you can start to envision that future of where you're going. You can start to get excited about the upsides. But of course, you want to make a good decision about where to go. And that requires patience and time. I'm speaking to myself here, too. I'm the transitional director of lifelong learning here, which means that I'm here to support a transition, and then I'll be leaving and allowing for UUC's future to emerge without me. In a few months, I'll be, I'll be leaving UUC and Florida, and I don't know where I'm going yet. It's uncomfortable. But I want to make a good choice. So I'm going to take my time in that discomfort because I trust that I'll be happier in the long run if I do. And the answer to the discomfort is definitely not trying to hold on to the past or the present, but rather trying to live into the future as best we can. 
UUC is in a similar place of uncertainty about what comes after Reverend Roberta and I go. It's uncomfortable. I hope you'll hang in there through the discomfort and not rush. I think this institution that is a support for so many people I think this institution will be better in the long run with the patience and the commitment to have those hard conversations and be with the discomfort. Okay, so let's circle back to the UUA, considering their historic move from their Boston headquarters. You know what we have here? A bunch of Unitarian Universalists a bunch of human beings trying to make a decision together with all of their varying opinions and motivations, kind of like those best foods. We've all got something that, that we prefer. A couple of years ago, I was at a training for interim ministers. Most of the ministers were either Lutheran or Methodist, United Church of Christ, Presbyterian. The UU ministers were in the minority. And the time came when the trainer asked us, so what can you do if your congregation is locked in conflict about whether to go this way or whether to go that way? Now, our Protestant Christian minister friends had the answer. Will you ask the leaders, what would Jesus do? And of course, the UU ministers look at each other in commiseration, wishing that we had a question like that that would be such a focal guiding question for us. We have our guiding principles and sources, of course, but they leave an extraordinary amount of room for debate. The UUA Board of Trustees received numerous value statements to consider in their considering the move of headquarters. According to UU World, Michael O'Haran, the UUA's Director of Operations, said a lot of money and time go into maintaining the UUA's old buildings. Because they're in a historic district, there are also restrictions on replacing doors and windows for energy efficiency. It can be pretty challenging, he said. A newer building could be more energy efficient and easier to maintain, he said but it could also cost a lot more to clean if, if, the larger, if there's a larger space than what they currently had. Many of our sibling congregations in New England find themselves in a bind about their buildings. They have these beautiful traditional New England churches from back when the Unitarians and Universalists were clearly Christian-centered denominations. The buildings are often white with a steeple and old wooden pews that are short and have gates at the end. That's to keep in the, the warmth. You have a little stove that you put by your feet back in the day and you try to keep the heat in because it was cold in those New England churches. These New England churches, like UUA headquarters, are special buildings like this octagon, it's a very special building. But as it relates to, to UUA headquarters or these New England churches, what is our relationship with the past? What do we do with the past that is still here in our present? Do we have to keep what we inherit? Do we wanna preserve buildings for future generations? Or we do, do we want to have a legacy of a faith that can outgrow buildings? Another consideration for the UUA was that from 2001 to 2011, the decade preceding these conversations about where new, the new headquarters should be, the number of UUs in New England had been declining, whereas the number of Unitarian Universalists on the West Coast and throughout the rest of the country had been increasing. So some argued that it was reasonable 
that we should at least put the headquarters in the middle of the country. The Congregationalists, known today as the United Church of Christ, were just like the Unitarians regarding their New England roots, but they had shifted their headquarters to Cleveland, Ohio. What if we set up not shop next to the UCC? We work with them on a number of projects anyway, social justice, our whole live sexuality education program. Being in the same city would be great for collaboration and we'd be a more powerful force in the world together. This was the argument. However, Unitarian Universalism is such a mainstay in New England that even with the declining numbers, just the small states of Massachusetts and Vermont together had more Unitarian Universalist members of congregations than all of California, Oregon, and Washington combined. So of course the real question is, what is the center of our faith? The center, like the headquarters, what is the center that binds us together, that helps us make our decisions? What unifies us? What is that what would Jesus do question for us? The answer is supposed to be the mission, right? The mission that's posted right here behind me. To some extent, I have to assume that that's, that's what binds us together, this mission. But I, also note, but I also note that you use, as you use, we have the opportunity to rewrite the mission when it when it's time, when it's no longer a reflection of the institution's core. But nevertheless, I'll go on and say that UUC's mission is to celebrate dignity and respect for all, to nurture lifelong spiritual growth, to act for justice and equality, and serve the wider community. This sounds a lot like other UU congregations. For example, the mission of the UU Church of Chattanooga, Tennessee is to create beloved community, awaken hearts and minds, resist injustice and act with compassion, and embrace life and care for the earth. Sometimes congregations tighten this wording up so that the phrasing can be oft repeated and easily memorized. The mission of First Universalists in, in uh, Minneapolis reads, in the universalist spirit of love and hope, we give, receive, and grow. The mission of UU Santa Fe, New Mexico reads, we nurture hearts and minds, practice beloved community, and work for justice. The succinctness of the mission makes it easy to, easier to remember, easier to, um, to be able to recite it, even. And for me, having worked with you all for over a year now, I find that succinctness to be more aligned with the chalice extinguishing that you've used for so long. Go in peace, go making peace, live gently, love mightily, and bow to the mystery. So I have that one memorized. It's the only thing I have memorized from UUC, but it, it came very quickly. And not just because I heard it time after time, but because it's deeply meaningful. I, I really love those words. I hope that I'll always remember them. They're both a hope and an intention, a mission and a prayer. I feel a sense of reverence among us when those words are spoken. Honestly, it's, it's been a little bit of a frustration for me as I've moved from congregation to congregation. Mission, congregations, mission statements are generally so broad it's kind of fun in that I can do pretty much anything I would want to do, and it would be within the mission. But the hard part is that all of us can do whatever we want to do from UU values and still be within the mission. 
And so it makes it hard to come together sometimes, it feels like. And, and this may sound critical, and I want to just say that this is, this is a criticism of my life, too. You know, it's hard to focus on just one thing or just, you know, I want to say just one or two things. Can we say two? Because really, you know, I want to do all the things. And so whether it's in our communal lives or in our personal lives, that ability to focus is so, so important. So what is the main thing at UUC? Last summer, Reverend Roberta led some opportunities to consider the dynamics between individual and community. When a group of human beings come together for a shared goal, as I've said, they can be incredibly powerful. You've seen this. You've seen this in your lives. Focusing on our individual priorities is understandable, but sacrificing that for the collective power that we can have can make a tremendous difference. Many of us have strong opinions about what's most worth our time. And one thing that I keep thinking of for myself is, would you rather make a small difference on the issue that you care about the most, or would you rather join with others on what's maybe third or fourth most important to me but have a giant impact in that area? It's a tough question, and maybe one that doesn't have to be answered with one or the other. The UU congregation in Ventura, California, though, is a model for me of this focus. A few years back, they decided, to, they decided that homelessness would be their issue. Just homelessness. That's what they would focus on. They advocated for affordable housing and mental health services. They hosted memorial services for the homeless who died in their community, who weren't being honored and celebrated for their lives in some other way, regardless of if they were connected with the congregation. It was a way for them to honor the worth and dignity of every person. And recognizing that climate change more directly impacts those who are unhoused, environmental issues are included in their work. But they focus on homelessness. That's the center that they've chosen together. The work, and they work from there rather than starting with what they individually want to do and seeing how they can fit that in with homelessness. So, like I said, I'm in transition, UUC is in transition, this whole world is in transition right now. What do we do when it doesn't feel like we have a center yet, when we don't know quite where we're going? Two hundred years ago, the Universalists adopted what's called the Winchester Profession. It's sometimes considered the precursor to the Unitarian Universalist principles, and it was adopted in 1803. It begins, we believe that the Holy Scriptures of the Old and New Testaments contain a revelation of the character of God and of the duty, interest, and final destination of mankind. While many Protestant faiths had a similar focus on the Jewish and Christian scriptures, these Universalists were distinct in that they, that they claimed that these books contain a revelation of the character of God. Not the one and only, and not that the whole series of books is all that there is, but that within these books there is a revelation. They accepted that there were other revelations which prepared the ground not only for our principles but for our sources and which list the Jewish and Christian scriptures alongside earth-centered teachings, world religions, and more. To reflect their decentering of Christianity, the symbol of their faith was a circle to represent the oneness of humanity. So they had a circle with a cross off to the side. So it was a circle 
with a cross, instead of it being centered, it was off to the side to, to symbolize that much more was included than just Christianity. But again, I ask myself, when you don't have something to put in the center, what do you use to fill the hole? Well, our, Unitarian, our universalist ancestors of faith used love. Love was their focus. It was their center. I invite you to use love through whatever transition you're going through in life. But I'm also going to give you three more options, which is ironic because I was just talking about focus and now I'm giving you options. Gratitude. Gratitude is a place that we can hang out in as we're making a transition when we don't know where we're going yet. We can just pay attention to what it is that there is to be grateful for in the present moment. Curiosity, that's a personal favorite of mine. I find that when I can shift to curiosity, my mind opens up and my heart follows. And service, focusing sometimes on other people can really be supportive in helping us have us find that sense of purpose again and feel like we are moving forward in whatever way we possibly can. So again, love, gratitude, curiosity, and service. So whatever transitions you may be going through right now, I pray that one of those will help you hold the center and support you into the future. The UUA board ended up deciding to sell the historical buildings and move UUA headquarters to the Innovation District of downtown Boston. They're now in a green building that they share with other organizations, and by sharing it, they further reduce the environmental impact. Most of the space is open to encourage people to mix and mingle, to learn and grow in community, and to find support and collaborate on the important issues of the day. Artifacts from our faith's past decorate the walls alongside high-tech displays. I wonder what UUC will be like in years to come. <laughs>